Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got some PC industry news for you here on the channel today. This is actually going to be the first in what will hopefully be a long series of videos focusing in on the PC cooling industry. And I'll be looking at two different manufacturers today, Noctua and Scythe. Neither of these should be new to you if you've been following the channel, because of course both of them have been awarded a number of number one rankings in my shootouts. Now, for instance, the NHD 15. I've probably given this cooler more award than any other cooler, except perhaps the Scythema 2. All right, these are my favorite air coolers on the market. And then we have my two favorite fans. We got the NF-A12X25 from Noctua and the Scythe Kaza Flex 120 from Scythe, of course. This is my favorite radiator fan and favorite case fan, respectively. I also have two of my favorite low-profile coolers, NHL-12S and the Shuriken 2. Now, while these two companies definitely compete, they sometimes have slightly different market segments, and I'll point that out in this video. And I'll also be discussing some of the products coming up from these companies. Now, I wanna be clear, I'm not revealing any confidential information, but I did get some interesting information from both of these companies about upcoming products that isn't necessarily public. At the same time, it's not confidential because they told me. So I'm gonna be sharing that with you today. So starting with Noctua, they actually publish a roadmap and they've just updated their roadmap for Q2 and of course everything's been delayed. This is something that Noctua is notorious for, but I want to be clear, I'm not critical about this at all because Noctua is the only company that goes out and gives us a one-year outlook on what's coming up in their manufacturing cycle. And that's not something other manufacturers are going to do because you know what, there's risk to that. Sometimes things slip, sometimes things don't even come out. And Noctua is up front and says, hey, yep, that slipped. Sorry, we couldn't do it. I'll start with a perfect example. The very first thing on their roadmap, the only thing they're going to be introducing, hopefully, this quarter, quarter two, 2021, is their passive cooler. Now, this was originally debuted at Computex 2019, so almost two years ago. So you may say, well, what's the deal? You know, it's so late. Well, listen. Honestly, I think it's cool that they're finally coming up with this. They've told me that the issue is definitely manufacturing costs. It's not a redesign. So what you saw in 2019 is very much going to be what you're going to see this quarter if it does hit the market. Now, personally, I'm not as excited about this as other products because I don't really believe in passive CPU cooling. As they make clear, you need fans in your chassis. And my opinion is if you're going to have one fan in your chassis, it should be on your CPU cooler. You can have your chassis passive but your cpu cooler should be active that's my perspective on cooling you can disagree with me if you want to so one thing for sure is it's going to be huge right to dissipate heat without a fan you need a really high powered cooler and that means if you don't have a fan lots and lots of metal now they also will offer the option of mounting a fan on there and that of course begs the question well how is it going to be better than other fan powered coolers i don't know we'll have to see it may be something I test if there's interest in it among my viewers, but it's not kind of the first thing on my agenda. But anyway, that's the first thing on Noctua's agenda in terms of the roadmap. Now moving ahead to quarter three, we're looking at black versions of the NFA12X25, which should be pretty popular. Now, if Noctua keeps with its present strategy of adding $5 to the cost, they'll be 35 bucks, which is a lot for a 120 millimeter cooler, but could be worth it if you're equipping a radiator or a heat sink with these, I've made very clear in my previous videos, I don't think these are very good case fans, certainly not for the price. So don't go buying five $35 NF-A12X25 Chromex Blacks when they hit the market, I think that would be wasteful, but certainly feel free to equip your radiators or your heat sinks with them. Um, also related product, the NH-U12A Chromex Black will be coming out. So that's their premier 120 millimeter cooler, previously only available with these beige fans. I expect it'll be um, actually going to be a, probably $120. Now, the reason is because Noctua actually just had a price increase across the board, $10 on all of its coolers, uh, their tower coolers, and $5 on its low-profile coolers. So the NHU-12A just went up from $100 to $110, and the Chromex Black treatment will add another $10, to, so it'll go up to $120, making it the most expensive air cooler on the market, well, at least 120 millimeter class. So I think that's pretty expensive, uh, particularly considering my test, it didn't actually outperform the Fuma 2, so it'll now be twice the price. 
you can do your own math on that. And a lot of people didn't like my review showing that the U12A was equivalent to Fuma 2. That's fine. You can go find another review. Um, I don't think it'll be worth $120, but it will be black and that'll look cool. All right. So those are the two things coming out quarter three. Quarter four, things start to get a little bit exciting. We'll have some white fans. Those were postponed again to quarter four. I assume it'll be white versions of these. I hope it is because these are the best fans. I hope it's not the NFF 12, which I don't think is a very good fan, but it may, they may just coast on their name brand recognition and make white versions of those because they still sell really well. Uh, these are really their only great fans, but they will have a new next gen 140 millimeter fan also coming out quarter four. You know, most people would expect it to be like the NFA 14 X 25, right? Just scaled up versions of these fans. It could be, but I found in my test that often you can't just scale up a fan to 140 millimeters and expect it to perform the way you want it to. A lot of manufacturers have completely different designs for the 140 millimeter class uh, fans. And I expect that Noctua has put a lot of R&D into this, and we may see something completely different from the NFA 12X25. One thing is for sure, they probably should come out with it in black from the start, right? I mean, at this point, I think it's pretty clear people want these in black and they'll pay extra for them. So I expect it to be a black 140 millimeter fan. And some of the reasons that you can't just scale it up perfectly to 140 millimeter is that you're dealing with a larger surface area, but a larger hub in the middle, so less focused airflow. You have a larger motor that's potentially louder, but also stronger. You're going to spin it at a lower RPM typically to get the same performance. And so you really have to work with the airflow and think, well, how can I get the best performance out of this fan when it's spinning slower with a larger surface area, and potentially with heavier blades and a heavier motor, so there's more rotational mass. You really have to think about it. And I know that Noctua, if any company out there is thinking about it, they are thinking about it. They are definitely going to come out with something interesting. It could be completely different from this fan. So I'm looking forward to that fan. Now, starting in 2022, we potentially will see the next generation NHD 15 arrive. It was postponed again. It was supposed to come out into 2021. Who knows exactly when it will be uh, uh, hit the market. But one thing is for sure, even though I've suggested it might be called the NHD 16, kind of jokingly in past videos, that's definitely not going to be the name because Noctua has a strict nomenclature for its products. NH, that means Noctua heatsink, and then D is D-class, dual tower, and 15 refers to the fan size. So 15 is 15 centimeters to 150 millimeters. The previous version of this cooler was the NHD 14, had 14 centimeter fan, actually a 14 centimeter uh, central fan and a 12 centimeter front fan. So, you know, this was a huge step up. It's ruled the market for years, uh, practically like six or seven years now. And the next gen version will have a different name. It won't be the NHD 16. I expect it may be called the NHD 15A. Why? Because the 120 millimeter class next gen cooler is called the NHU 12A, a variation of the U12S. So I don't know, they may just like fly under the radar and just tack an A onto the name and make it completely different. One thing that they have confirmed to me is they're definitely considering that it's gonna be an offset heatsink. And I would say, very good chance of that. They've had good success with their single fan D15S. It allows better clearance, better compatibility with motherboards and video cards. It still has some challenges when you mount a front fan with RAM, so they may try to offset it in multiple directions to clear RAM. Who knows if they can do that without hitting other components. Maybe the back of the chassis is going to be the barrier there, but we will probably have a dual fan, dual tower cooler. It will use that next gen 140 millimeter fan. It will almost certainly be black, and it will almost certainly not be called the NHD 16. That's what I've got for you. It should be really interesting. I'm very, very excited about the NHD, whatever it's called, D15A, I'll refer to it as for now. Now, I do want to mention one controversial topic that I brought up in my videos and a lot of my viewers have asked about. The issue of whether or not Thermaltake has kind of stepped on the toes of Noctua and its NFA 12 x 20 fans with their new Tough Fan 12 series. Now, Noctua is of the opinion that Thermaltake did use a 3D copy of the NFA 12 X25 to design the Tough Fan 12. They said that they are exploring their legal options, but choose to use most of their funds on R&D rather than legal battles. And Thermaltake is a pretty big company and really is no stranger to legal disputes. So I don't think it makes a lot of sense for Noctua to pursue this. And here's my opinion on this. 
Noctua's own fans are a pretty close replica of the Nidex Servo Gentle Typhoon that were released long before these hit the market in 2018. Now, Noctua has issued a statement saying these are different enough that there really was no patent infringement. And Nidex Servo, I don't think, ever made a claim of that. But, you know, the fact that this type of design has been around a long time and a lot of different companies have used it in different ways, sometimes licensing from Nidex Servo means you know, it might be tough for Noctua to say, hey, Thermaltake, you clearly copied us and we clearly didn't copy someone else. So you see where I'm going? It doesn't make a ton of sense for them to pursue Thermaltake on this matter. All right, let's move on to Scythe. Now, Scythe and Noctua are fierce competitors, both manufacturing primarily in Taiwan, both around for nearly two decades, but they rarely go head to head. You should really take a close look at their product lines. They have very few products that directly compete. So for instance, the Fuma 2 does have a competitor in the NH-U12S and U12A, but it's better. And I think Noctua knows that. On the other hand, Scythe has no 140 millimeter class cooler, and they probably know it's because they can't touch this. Starting with the fact they don't have a really good 140 millimeter radiator fan. They haven't created one, they'd need one to compete with Noctua. So I think they're letting Noctua handle that market. Now on the other hand, in low profile, they really compete in different areas. The Shuriken 2 is my favorite 58 millimeter tall cooler. Noctua doesn't have one. I've asked Noctua about this. I said, why do you have a cooler at 37 millimeters, the L9i, and then 65 millimeters, the L9X65, and nothing in between? Oh, we don't see a market for that. I think you could read that two ways. There is no market for that, or our competitors have cornered that market. So there's a lot of competitors at 47 millimeters, at 58 millimeters. Noctua doesn't want to wade into those waters because they know they'd have to go up against Scythe and the Shuriken 2. On the other hand, they really have it locked down with the NHL-12S at 70 millimeters. Scythe has tried to compete with it with their big Shuriken 3, but they failed. It wasn't quite as good. So I think that both companies know where their strengths lie. Now the Kaza Flex 120, fantastic case fan, best on the market. And big news, they've just released a black version of this coming in at $17. It's available on Amazon now. They also have to go along with that black version, a new Mugen 5, the Mugen 5 Black, coming in at $60, about a $10 price premium to get that blacked out look, but wow, does it look good, and I'm not going to review it. Why is that? I've asked Scythe about this. I said, you know, $60, so you're pushing that price up a little bit to get the black color. How does it compare to the Fuma 2, which I like so much? They said, well, our dual tower coolers perform better than our single tower coolers. Enough said. I don't need to do any more. I don't need to spend the time reviewing the Mugen 5 Black, because I know it's not going to be good as good as the Fuma 2. And I'm going to continue recommending this to you, even if you don't like the gray and black color scheme. You'll have to wait for the Fuma 2 Black. Is that coming? No, got you there. There is no Fuma 2 Black on the horizon. I've asked Scythe. They've said, no Fuma 2 Black. Then I asked them, is there going to be a Fuma 3? No comment. All right. So I'm going to read between the lines here and tell you there is going to be a Fuma 3. That is not confirmed. And they are probably going to bring that out in black only. Now, the question is, which fans are going to be equipped on that Fuma 3? Again, that is completely unofficial, right? Is it going to be the new black version of the Kaza Flex? Well, keep in mind that they need a slim model in front to pair with the standard model in the middle. They haven't yet announced that, but it's likely that that's going to come out later this year. But they also have another fan they just announced hitting retail in the U.S. this month, and it's going to be called the Wonder Snail 120. Now, this was actually brought to my attention by my viewers. It was first announced in Japan, and of course, that's where Scythe is based. And the Wonder Snail is something that yeah, has a brand new name, right? Very creative, but it has a very long history. It is based on the Gentle Typhoon. Once considered the very best fan in the business, it was licensed or made in cooperation with Nidex Servo. And I've asked Scythe about this. Are they working with Nidex Servo again on the Gentle Typhoon design or derivative? They said, no, the Wonder Snail is different. Now, I think it's different in the same way that this fan is different from the Gentle Typhoon. Different enough that you don't have to pay a licensing fee. All right. Hopefully that means it's better. That the Wonder Snail is better than the Gentle Typhoon, but that's not necessarily a given. All right, some people still swear by the Gentle Typhoon over these Noctua fans, so we'll have to see if Scythe is able to really re-engineer this in a way that it actually beats its predecessor. But there's no doubt that the Wonder Snail is the successor to the Gentle Typhoon. It's coming in at $17, so same price as the Kaza Flex Black. It is coming in in black as well, and you'll see the design is very similar to these fans that have been around for many years. 
the NF-812X25, the Gentle Typhoon, anything from Nidic Servo. So it's, it's, a, it's a familiar look, uh, but it's in black, so that's really good. And the price is just $17, which is pretty amazing, actually. Scythe is really able to keep its products very competitive in terms of price. So, you know, if there is going to be a Fuma 3, which I think there is, it will probably use the Wonder Snail in the middle. And if they can offset it a little bit more than even the Fuma 2 was offset away from the RAM, they could then use two of them, one in the middle and one up front. We'll see if there's enough space for that. They may actually have to trim the back of the heatsink a little bit to clear the motherboard or other case components like the case fan in the rear of many cases. And it may be worth it if you could get two Wonder Snails on that cooler because that would make up for a slight, slightly smaller heatsink overall. So my guess is that's what they'll do. They're going to put two Wonder Snails on there, enough with the mix and match fan sizes. And one of the things that was really interesting about the Fuma 2 is that the fans were counter-rotating. So one went clockwise, one went counterclockwise. And they said that that created a vortex, which improved the performance. But ultimately, they were using case fans on a cooler. All right, the Scythe Casa Flex is not a very good cooler fan, except on the Fuma 2. I think it would make sense for Scythe to just move on, use a true cooler fan on its coolers, and that's going to be the Wonder Snail. That's what it's all about. So very excited about that. Lots of great products coming from both of these companies. If you have any questions about this stuff, definitely post it down below. I'm really excited to be able to share this information with you. Again, I'm not going to share anything that's confidential, but I can always pass questions along to these manufacturers for you and get back to you if I get a response. You know, I'm excited about the competition between these. You know, they're going at each other, but also targeting slightly different markets. And that's great for us. I think, you know, with each company focusing on its strengths, that's the way it should be. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and subscribe because that will give me the sign that you want to see more of this. I have a lot more information I've dug up from a lot of other manufacturers in the cooling business. I'd love to share that with you, but I got to see some viewership. I got to see some interest in these videos. I want to make sure this is something you guys will watch. So as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.